Welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. Our top story, the D.C. Circuit reverses the NLRB in a joint employer case. A three-judge panel held that the board did not follow consistent precedents in finding that CNN was a joint employer of a group of contracted technicians. The board decided this case prior to changing the joint employer standard in Browning-Ferris. So the court did not consider the new indirect control standard. Instead, they focused only on how the NLRB's previous test was applied in this case. John Fullerton has more. In its well-publicized decision in Browning-Ferris in August of 2015, the board reviewed decades of joint employer precedent, acknowledged that direct and immediate control had been the applicable standard in the past, but decided to overrule or, or reverse that standard and implement a new standard going forward. The issue is that the CNN decision of the board came down in March of 2015, five months prior to the Browning-Ferris decision. The Court of Appeals vacated the unfair labor practice charges that were based on the joint employer uh, finding against CNN because the board had not engaged in a proper analysis of, of or explanation of why it was departing from the existing joint employer standard. The NLRB gains a second Republican member, but the Republican chairman announces he'll leave the board later this year. A week after the Senate confirmed President Trump's nominee Marvin Kaplan to a seat on the NLRB, current chairman Philip Miscamara announced that he will not seek a second term. His term expires on December 16th of this year. A Senate vote on the nomination of William Emanuel, President Trump's second labor board nominee, is expected in September. Emanuel's confirmation would give the Republicans a 3-2 to two majority for the first time in nine years, at least until Ms. Gamera departs. The A Circuit finds a non-compete for an independent contractor unreasonable. The contractor bought supplies from a farm company in Iowa and then sold them in a markup. After he ended his relationship with the business, he sold competing products to a customer base he built while contracting with the company. The company sued alleging violation of its non-compete agreement. The court concluded that the defendant's customers belonged to him rather than the company, and that the agreement was not necessary to protect the business. The court found the non-compete unreasonable and unenforceable. There is no FLSA violation for failing to pay overtime that was not reported. So says the Seventh Circuit. A collective of Chicago police officers claim they failed to receive overtime pay for off-duty work performed on city-issued Blackberries. The Seventh Circuit found that the police department had a process for allowing the police officers to record overtime hours worked, but that the officers did not submit these off-duty hours for overtime pay. The court also found that there was no policy or practice to discourage the officers from reporting these hours. And that brings us to our tip of the week. Tracy Van Dusten, senior recruiter and account manager for NRI Staffing, is here with some advice on minimizing risk for a painless recruitment process. Number one, put in more work up front. Really take the time to analyze the position, gain a clear idea of what you're looking for in a candidate. Number two, if this is an established position, ask yourself, what personality traits and soft skills have worked well in the past? Ensure that the position you're hiring for will align with the long-term goals of your potential new hire. Number four, how fast do you hire? Are you setting realistic expectations up front with your candidates on your hiring timeline, and last, who's in charge of checking or rechecking references? Your HR department or the hiring manager or supervisor? Often, we find that a supervisor speaking directly to a previous manager can provide valuable insight on how to successfully manage and develop your new hire. Thanks, Tracy. That's it for Employment Law This Week. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.